kids, welcome to Revive Nations, where we revive, restore, and renew me and you. And today's episode is change. Now, there are many changes throughout this episode. See if you can spot them. It's like a game. See you at the end. Pastor Sean, today's theme is all about change. Oh, you mean this kind of change? Uh, no, not oh. this kind of change. I heard it's about change. I'm all ready. I got my winter clothes on. It's winter out. Uh, Jenny, um, it's not about changing for winter. That's that's not it. It's not that oh. kind of change. What kind of change is it? Of course not. It's summertime. Let's go snorkeling. Uh, it's not about getting ready for snorkeling. It's not that kind of change. Okay, this is uncomfortable. No. Change for birthday party? Uh, no. Good try, but no. Time for the science fair. No, it's not that kind of change. Mm. Ready to party? <laughs> oh my goodness. It's not getting ready for a party. It's not that kind of change. Well, maybe you need a super cool superhero. No, it's not changing into a superhero. It's not that kind of change. Okay. No. Try again. Change for adventure. Let's go on a safari. It's not about safari either. It's not that kind of change. No. So what kind of change is it? Yeah, what well, kind? Seriously? You know what? It's the kind of change that only happens when God moves us. It's change that happens mm. with God. Okay, so we're gonna press the button and find out. Okay. <laughs> God, one true God. Speak to me as you've done many a time before. Huh? Oh, okay. Wait, what? But we just got here a week ago. I don't understand why we have to. Okay. Okay, okay. Okay. <gasps> Where am I? Uh, uh, hello, you are here amongst the people of Israel. But who are you? you who am I? I'm Moses. Who are you? I'm Pastor Sean. Well, Pastor Sean, I just heard God. We have to pack this whole thing up and get going. Pack what up? Everything, this whole camp. Roll up your tents. Take your camels. <laughs> Don't eat the manna. All of this stuff. We have to start moving. The cloud is not going to wait. Wow. Yeah, we follow a cloud in the day, fire at night. You're, you're new here. I, I, don't I think didn't I've know any of this stuff. OK, well, now you know. Go, go, go. OK, Lord, what else? <laughs> Oh my goodness, I have to get everything ready. I can't believe we're moving again. Oh, it's so exciting. Thank you, Lord. You're so good. You're so good. Oh, we're going to follow the cloud. I'm so excited. You know what? I have to get everything ready. OK, I'm going to make sure I have everything packed up. Uh, what else do I OK, it's time to get ready. Oh my goodness, I can't believe this. The cloud, I can see. It's moving. OK, we need to get organized. Hey. Oh, uh, who are you? Uh, I, I'm Miriam. Who, who are you? Uh, I'm Pastor Sean. Pastor Sean, I haven't heard of you before. Are you new to the camp? Uh, pretty much new, yeah. Okay, um, well, how can I help you? Well, I was just with this guy Moses, and now oh, you okay. seem to be all in a tizzy, and I'm just wondering <laughs> what's going on. Oh my goodness, we're getting ready to move again, because whenever God wants us to move, we pack up everything and we move. Do you see that huge cloud? Yeah, I see the cloud. Well, that tells us it's time to move. So we're getting packed up. We're packing everything up because whenever the cloud moves, we move. That's how God tells us when it's time to go. Wow. Sometimes we camp for maybe days and then we move. Sometimes it can be a week or two, sometimes a month. But as soon as the cloud shows up, we know it's time to go. So what happens if you have to move at night? Oh, it's so cool. The cloud, it becomes fire. So then fire. we can see in the dark and we move with the fire that moves. It's so cool. God is bringing us to the promised land. I'm excited. We're getting packed up. We're getting ready. Wow, that's really amazing. We follow the fire wherever it takes us. Wow, that's amazing. Do you see, kids? Real change. It takes obedience. Uh, who are you talking to? That's kind of weird. Oh, I need to make sure I get the manna ready. Definitely, we need to bring manna on this journey. Okay, all right. Miriam, 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 Yes, Miriam. yes, my brother. <laughs> That's manna. Yes, that's <laughs> right. We need to bring manna with us. What's a manna with you? You're not supposed to bring that. Well, what if we get hungry tomorrow, Moses? God gives it to us fresh every single day. If you taste that, you're going to have a moldy experience in your mouth. Mm, I know, but uh, I just want to bring it just in case. God said, every day I give you manna, you don't go back and fetch it because you have to trust in Him. Mm, okay. Have a little faith, sister. Let's get going. 
You see, kids, real change takes obedience and faith. Hi, kids. Today we're going to worship together and we're going to sing a song that's all about trusting Jesus. It's about following Jesus. When he goes, we go. When he stays, we stay. And when he moves, we move. Sing with me. So the song goes like this. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow you. Okay, let's try that again. Where you go, I'll go. When you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow you. Did you guys get it? Let's try it one more time. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow you. Whom you love, I love. How you serve, I'll serve. If this life I lose. Bye, kids. Thank you for worshiping with me. Revive, renewed, restored today. Bible Time Adventure. Oh, I'm going to put this down. It's so heavy. Don't you love my latest oh. bread? Oh, it smells so good. I know. It's great. It rose so well. It, oh, my goodness. Is that your latest perfume? Yeah, you smell it. Oh, oh it's the it's most gorgeous. expensive in the land. Oh, you it's know, it's fun. exciting. It Today's is. day 35. I'm feeling and we get to spend every day together. That is Isn't so, that so good. cool? I, love I know. It. And I love your hair. Oh my goodness, your hair is so beautiful. <clears throat> Hi, Nehemiah. Hi. Hi, ladies. Uh, nice bread you got there. Mm -hmm. mm, nice crown you got there. Hmm? Yeah. Mm. Get back to work. We got a wall to build. Okay, go ahead, get walking. Get to work. Okay. Who are you? I am Nehemiah. I am the project manager for this here Jerusalem wall mm. that we're building. We're on day 35. Wow. And uh, you look like free labor. <laughs> you know, everyone in around this place, even if they're not a builder, whether they're a baker or a princess, they're all chipping in to work hard to build this wall for God and God's people. You in? Uh, I'm a carpenter. Great, we need some of those. We need some hard workers. We are taking anyone, literally anyone, please. So you, you're gonna get started. And I'm just letting you know, you're gonna feel sore, you're gonna have bunions, you're gonna be really sweaty, and you're gonna smell like sheep. Wow, ooh. You know what, kids? I think real change takes hard work. Who are you talking to? You should be getting to work. Mm. I am already fishing men here. What are you doing? Uh, I was just joking. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, you know what? I'm trying to sell all my boats. Why? Um, you know Jesus? Yeah. He came to me and he told me that he will make me as a fishers of men. 
So I don't have any business to do with my boat and I'm gonna be fish anymore. What? <sighs> it's a fishing all day. Oh, I'm trying to fish, huh? It's tiring at times. <sighs> I wish I'd do something different than this tiring fishing job. Simon, son of Jonah, cast aside your net, for I will make you a fisher of men. Follow me. Fishers of men, that sounds very convincing. Fishers of men, amen! You see, that's why I have to give up on my fishing and I'm selling all my boats and nets for Jesus. You gave up everything for Jesus? Yes, I gave up everything for Jesus. Wow. You see, kids, change means that we give up everything because of Jesus and what he did for us. Hey, Oscar, it's good to see you yeah, again. It's totally rap, it's so good to see you. Yeah. Yeah, what's up today? Well, you know, we've been talking a lot about change. Uh, like, uh, what exactly about change, though? Well, you know, change, it takes a lot of capacity. Uh, Do you understand what that word is? Yeah, it takes a lot of capsicum. Uh, no, not capsica, capacity. Do you know what it is, though? Oh, yeah, it takes a lot of captivity. Uh, no, not captivity. Capacity. Do uh, you understand what that is? Or do I need to explain to you, Oscar? You can, like, slowly say it again and I'll repeat Well, and then... there's this word in yeah. the English language. It's called capacity. Capacity. It's what God helps us to become more like him. It oh. helps us to be able to do the things that God asks us to do. So when we have kids capsicity, he can help us be more like him. Exactly. So let me give you an, ex uh, an example. Because we have, like, look, we just happen to have a bunch of groceries on the table, Oscar. Oh, okay. So when you are small, yeah. or when there's a, like a, a little small child. When I was a larva, yeah. When you were a larva, yeah. how much could you carry? Uh, not very much, to be not honest. Not much, exactly. Sure. Exactly. Sure. exactly. But what happened when you grew up into something that was a little bigger than the lava? Oh, well, I uh, could still carry nothing because I have no arms. Okay, so let me think, Oscar. How about uh, school? Oh, yeah, I've done school. Um, I went to grade one. Okay, so in grade one, yeah. how much did you learn in grade one? Did you know a lot of things in well, grade I one? Well, I learned how to do one plus one is two. Exactly, so and you learned the yeah. basics, didn't you? I learned the basics. So you didn't have capacity to do uh, trigonometry or you didn't have the capacity to do fractions, did no, you? No, I never planted a trigonometry no. and I never okay. fracted anything. Okay, so let's see then. So, as you grew older... In grade two, I got to learn how to use a pencil and it was really fun and I got to have lots of fun drawing things. Yeah! So in grade two, you learned more than you learned in grade one. Yeah. So how about grade three? Um, yeah, so in grade three, I also learned a little bit about science mm -hmm. and I did a lot of nice art projects and we grew some beans and we looked at some animals and it was quite enjoyable and fun and I learned so, so, so much. Exactly, so by, by the time you got to grade three, you knew a lot more than you knew in grade one. Yeah, is that capacity? Well, maybe you can try and say the word properly because the word is capacity. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, 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 Capsky, could you help me? Ka, ka, pa, pa, city, city. There you oh, go. like a kappa city. Capacity. That's right, Oscar. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it, I got it. Yeah. Got it. Wait. Did I just grow in capacity just now by you being just capacity? Did. Yes, you just did. Oh my did. goodness! So that's wow. the way that God works with us. Ah. So, so let me get this straight. The more you listen to God and grow in God, the more stuff you can do for God because you have a greater capacity. Wow! That's amazing, Oscar. You learn really fast. Uh, thank, thank you, Jesus. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good at that. Thank God. Yeah. Hey kids, real change takes great capacity. Yeah, and I know what's coming next. Can I hit it? Hit it. Yeah, Jesus, you gotta help me! 
Hi, wow! Sarah. That was fast! Hi, Pastor Sean! How come you look a little sad? Well, you know, I really want to change, but I can't! When I tell my mom that I'm gonna be good, I'm bad! And it makes me very sad! Oh! There's no need to be sad, Zara. Because Why? change takes time. Pastor Sean, I don't have that much time. My mommy says Jesus is coming soon. And I gotta get good. And I gotta be kind. And, oh! Oh, Zara, you shouldn't be sad about that. Why not? Because change just takes a lot of time. You know that it took us a long time to make this church look so beautiful. Well, did you do it in a day? Because I've been trying a whole day and I haven't changed yet. But Zara, it didn't take a day. Why do you think it took a day? It took us many, many, many days. And you know what? It took us years to, for, for us to make this place look so beautiful. Well, like, what did you do? Well, we had to, first we had to plan to see what we, what we wanted. We, we had to see, now how do we want this place to look? You know, I want to be kind. Yeah, so you have to practice to be kind and you have to be very patient with yourself. Patient with myself? Yes, because sometimes you might find that you won't be patient and you won't be kind to some people. That's right. I'm sometimes very, very not kind. And I want to be kind, Pastor Sean, because Jesus is kind. But also Jesus knows that sometimes we slip up. Well, what helps? Well, the Holy Spirit helps us. That's what helps. <gasps> Holy Spirit! That's right! Pastor Sarah said the Holy Spirit lives inside us. Is that how I get some change? Yes, that's exactly how you get to change, but you have to allow him to change you, but you also have to be very patient with yourself. Okay, so let's see if I got this right. If I'm patient with myself, and maybe you, and I'm patient with my mom, and maybe everybody else, then God will be patient with me? Yes, Zara, you've got it right. <sighs> Pastor Sean, thanks. Change is good. Yes, change is good. So how are you feeling now, Zara? I feel great. Oh, good. Thanks, Pastor Sean. You're welcome. In fact, I feel so good, I want to sing. Oh. I want to be a history maker in this land. You see, kids, for change to happen, you have to be patient with yourself.
kids, today we are making something really special and we have a special guest. Hi, Pastor Sean. Hi, Pastor Sarah. We're making bread, homemade bread. That's what I said. This is the month of manna and manna is all about bread. And I can't wait to show you what happens when we put the ingredients together and we get to this very special step of kneading the bread. Pastor so, Sean, do you know what- are we eating the bread? Uh, not quite yet. Pastor Sean, do you know what it means to knead the bread? Yeah, I knead the bread. <laughs> so true. You're right, I knead the bread is spelled N-E-E-D, but it's not the same kind of knead. Oh, no? Okay. no, this is knead and it starts with a K. That's what I said. I know it kind of sounds weird, right? You don't really hear it, but it's spelled K-N-E-A-D. And today we're going to learn all about kneading the bread and why it's important. But before we get there, maybe I can let you know some of the ingredients that you need at home to make the bread. So the first thing that you need is some milk. You also need some yeast. The yeast is a very important ingredient. What does the yeast do? The yeast actually is what helps the bread to rise. Ah, okay. Otherwise the bread is gonna be really flat and it's not gonna rise. And then we have flour, we have salt, we have olive oil, sugar and honey and we're going to put the recipe in the description below with the amounts that you need of each thing so you can actually take the time at home with a parent or a brother or sister to make the bread okay pastor sean so yeah. the first thing they had to do at home is mix everything together now you have the dough so, so how many breads does this make this is probably going to make two bread just like oh, that wow so it really rises right okay but you know what's more important what? How long does it take and when you can eat the bread? We'll get to that. So kids, the first step is adding all the ingredients together and I'm just gonna move them out of the way so that I can show you the next step. So the next step is that you're gonna knead the dough. Okay, so once you've mixed all the ingredients together, you're going to end up with dough like this. Okay, now the kneading is really like massaging the dough. It's, it's making sure that you, you, you press the dough and you push it together and you make sure that you do this so that the dough has to mix together really, really well. So does that make you tired so that you have to eat the bread to get strength? <laughs> <laughs> is that it's why true. you need the bread? Well, that's true. It is a lot of work kneading the dough. Because I just did a lot of work and I need to Right, eat and, and you're just watching me do it. So imagine how much I'm working. So, boys and girls, the kneading part of the dough is very, very important. Because if we don't do this part, you know what? The bread is not going to rise. That bread is risen. But if I don't do this, you know what? The bread is gonna be flat like this and it's not gonna have any bubbles or air inside. And it's not gonna fill you up. It's not gonna fill you no. up and it's not gonna taste mm -hmm. good because that's not the way it's supposed to be, right? So this kneading process is really important because you're squishing it, you're pressing it, you're stretching it and you're making sure that you get all the air bubbles inside the dough so that when you put it in the oven, it's gonna rise and it's gonna do exactly what it needs to do. So the kneading part is so important. If I miss this step, then the bread is not gonna taste good. And you know what, Pastor Sean, this reminds me of the topic of the day, which is all about change and how God wants us to be flexible when we go through change, Yeah. right? Because if when I'm going through a change, like maybe there's something that's happening in my school that's different, or maybe something in my family is different, and that's something that God wants me to do, Imagine I don't really want to change and then I don't let the Holy Spirit change me. Well, that's a little bit like mm -hmm. having bread yeah. that isn't kneaded and is yeah. flat. Yeah, explain it more. And you know, the prophet talks about how it's a season for us to rise. That means that when we go through change, we allow the Holy Spirit to stretch us, even though it's a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And once we allow that to happen, we will rise. That means we're gonna do really well wow. and we're gonna grow and our capacity is gonna grow and we're gonna have a really good attitude and we're gonna, we're just gonna be um, amazing and God is gonna be so happy with us. Wow, that's really interesting. It is. Mm. Uh, Pastor Sean, did you eat some of the bread? Actually, I did eat some of the bread oh. and it was really good. Okay. You see kids, change is good. <laughs> Wow, change is good. Change is yummy. And change is possible. And change is Jesus. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hi kids, I hope you've enjoyed this episode about change. 
Did you notice the changes that we put into each scene? Are you ready to play? Number one, the first change. What? You saw it too. Pastor Sarah with glasses on and with glasses off. You're right. Number two, you got it. It was Moses. First he had his hood on and then he had it off. What? Miriam too? You're right. Miriam had on bells and then she didn't. Nehemiah, you're right. Those big bushy eyebrows and then they weren't there. And Peter, was there any changes? No, you're so smart. Then we had the scene with Oscar. Who popped in? You're right, Oscar's sister Zoe popped in. That was funny. What? You're right, Zara's outfit changed. And you caught it. You're right, Pastor Sean's bread. First it was a whole loaf, and then it was cut. You know, Prophet Shaiju says that our greatness is in the details. And when we have eyes to see and ears to hear, we pick up changes all the time. You know what? Change takes a lot of patience. And I think it would be a great way for us to pray for patience so we can change every day and be more like Jesus. Would you like to? Okay, here we go. Lord Jesus, thank you that you love us so much. Help us to change every day to be more loving and more like you. And all God's children said, Amen! See you next time, kids. Bye!